So as I said earlier, today we will be um, comparing and contrasting the two organisms, the crayfish and the land snails. We'll be using a Venn diagram to do that, okay? One thing I wanted to do before is just to um, review some of our vocabulary, okay? Thank you. And we, we've been having this discussion a lot lately, especially in Reader's Workshop, but how important it is to find chunks that we know in order for us to figure out the meaning of a word. So I wanted just to go back and point out that many, many of you have schema or your prior knowledge for Spanish. And how important it is in lots of what we call academic words, but especially in science to be able to use that knowledge of Spanish to help you figure out some of these science words. So we, we have already talked about this. I'm just going to review. That organism in Spanish is... And if you notice, it's almost exactly the same. Hurry. Come here, please. Organismo. Mm -hmm. Come over here. Thank you. And structure is... And I'm going to need some help from Spanish speakers is a structura my close okay now notice it starts with the e but you can see the part of structure in there okay and then function function right very very similar and then this one although it's um now summer is different in spanish correct summer in spanish is Verano? Is it Verano? Okay. This one is actually a Latin root. And I'm, I'm introducing that because as fourth graders, you and all the way through your college career, you're going to be learning a lot about Latin and Greek roots. Prefixes, suffixes, yeah, Romans, Latin. So in, um, to help us with the snails, and estivate, it helps us to think uh, that estio, estio equals summer. So it's a summer sleep. And we had compared that yesterday to the opposite of what a bear might do. Right? Jesse. Um, uh, I just wanted to say something for the last year. Um, it doesn't really have to have the um, protection, it can also have camouflage. Mm. So you're also thinking of, uh, of, how the, uh, of how the snail uses that structure, right? So the function of it and how it uses. And remember that animals use their structure and, and, and the behaviors, like the moving of the, that we had talked about with the crayfish and um, using the tail flap to move quickly, or the snail retracting into its shell, that they use, organisms use the, the, their structures as adaptation, their behaviors as adaptations, right, to survive. So let's just go over, we have one focus question today, okay? So will you read this with me? How, How do the structures of a crayfish and snail compare? I just use the word compare for our focus question, okay? And at the end, we'll have a discussion about how they compare. Oh, can we put a crayfish in the snail? Together? So, let me go over the Venn diagram. And you, you have lots of experience with Venn diagrams. You have been... You have used lots of Venn diagrams. We've, we've used them in reading, and now you've been using them in writing for your nonfiction research books, okay? But let me just go over um, and give you some examples with crayfish. So let me go over 
with the crayfish and the land snails how the Venn diagram would work and give you just a few examples. So you know that when we use the Venn diagram to compare and contrast and that when we're comparing we're finding similarities. We're finding what they have in common or how they're alike. And we know that the similarities go right in here where they where the two circles overlap, right? And uh, con when we contrast, we are finding the differences. And we know that the differences are how they are not like each other, or how they're unlike each other. And the differences would go in the circle that is just, for example, just for the crayfish, or just for the land snails, right? So for example, crayfish have pincers. And we know that land snails do not. So we put pincers in the crayfish. And land snails, a difference here is land snails have coiled shell. Now, Something that they have in, in common, or they're similar, is eyes. They both have eyes. A way... They both have a structure that helps them see. They have eyes, right? So, what you're going to do is... You are going to get a copy of this Venn diagram. Uh, it'll be a notebook. It's a notebook page. This will, will go into your notebook. And you will have about 10 minutes to make your comparisons and write the differences and similarities. It's OK. But I want to first remind you about resources that you can use. OK? I have Natalie's notebook here to remind you. This is why scientists use a science notebook because when scientists are asked to do something like compare or contrast, when they have to make an inference or hypothesis about something we call or draw conclusions, they go back to their notebook and look at their evidence. You have two pages in here that you can use to help you when you're comparing. You have the crayfish diagrams that you've already used, right? And you also, and this was in our chapter, crayfish structures. You also have our crayfish structures notebook page, okay? Now, if you remember, you might, there, are, there were some different, um, or I should say there's more structures if you look at both, okay? For example, bristles is on this one, but swimmerettes is on this one, okay? You also have your notebook from this week about the structures of a snail. So you can use both of these resources when you are comparing and contrasting the structures of these two organisms, okay? Now, when you're somewhat finishing, I'm gonna put up the signal, and I'll give you um, the next instruction. So, this first, all right? Team captain, stay. Everybody else can go and get their science notebook out. So, I know that Leo seems to have lots of schema for this already, but don't forget, you have, where's your science notebooks? I think it's those ones. Don't forget, you want that sci your science notebook out and open, so if you need to refer back to it, you can. Also, your snail diagram. All right. I know that so many of you have so much schema for these structures that you think, I'm gonna do this without my notebook.
But remember that that is your resource to help you make your comparisons as complete as possible. So notebooks should be out. It can also help you with spelling if you need help with spelling. Thank you. I'll just set it here. We'll do it in writer's workshop, okay? Want me to cut it? Right. We'll do it in writer's workshop okay. when you're published. Okay. Hold the papers in it. That one's mine. You want to cut paper in it. And we still need no way. That one's mine. Papers? Did your table captain leave? Yes. Thank you for solving that problem. Responsible. Thank you. How is it going here? Nice. Mm -hmm. Yep, how they're similar. We say that it's how they're similar, but it's what they both what they both have. Or it's how they're alike, because sometimes they're it's not exactly the same, but it's it's close. How's it going, Sam? So can you explain to me real quick how what you're thinking here? Do you remember how the Venn diagram works? So on this side, this is only what the crayfish have. So remember, see how you put eyes here? So do they both have eyes? Yeah. So this one, you don't have to put that here because you've put it here. Okay? So on this side, it's only what the crayfish have. All right? Do you remember seeing that? Why don't you check your um, diagram of a crayfish? It shows you all. It shows you all of the structures. Nice job. I'll come back and check. But the crayfish have smaller ones that are next to the big ones. And the, the, the snails have the ones that are under the big ones. So question. Wait, do, do snails and crayfish? Oh, so quest. What? So, so let's talk about the antenna tentacle thing first, and then we can go back to your question. Let's use, remember what we observed. The tentacles on the snail, what happened when you got close to it? You put the antennae up. Or it retracted, huh? Yeah. It, but crayfish can't do that. So that should just go in. So I think they, you're correct in that they both have... Um, but they don't do the same thing. But they don't do the same thing. So it could almost go as something that's similar, but definitely different because the, the function is a little bit different, huh? Yeah, because theirs just moves back. Right. Theirs go in. Exactly. Does that, does that make but sense? the cool thing that we can do with our notebook and our sander, we could just put it on and like, yeah. find out different Exactly. Do you look snails? I mean, do uh, But the hard thing about my paper is the And where could you look to see if they have it? They have an egg pore, but not a, a breathing hole or a, a respiratory pore, huh? That was, that was your question, right, Anthony? Do you notice what this team's doing? Oh, uh, I don't have a problem. Do you notice? Yes. They have both their science notebook, their diagram of a crayfish right next to the diagram of a snail, so they can look and use the evit all that data. I don't have a page about the structure, about a page of the body parts. You should, if you don't have the diagram, you should have the other one that we did the investigation before, which was this, the crayfish structures. That also has a list of all the structures. Okay? Let's think back to our experiments. When you went to, t can I use your finger as a tentacle? If this was the snail's tentacle and we went to touch it, what happened? It withdrew. If you go to touch the crayfish antenna, what happens? 
So that, so it's kind of similar, but it's also different, huh? And I think, I think that's why they call them different things. The tentacles retract, where the antenna don't. They can, they just move. So that could almost be a difference too. Ask the group. Do snails have legs? They have a foot. They have one big foot. Just a foot. Ask your team. Have that discussion, okay? So where did you put the antennae or the tentacles? I put the antennae. Well, I put it in the middle. And why did you put it in the middle? Because they're both the same. They use it for kind of the same thing. For sensing. But what? Um, do you think JJ? We need your help real quick. Crayfish actually have feet instead of just legs. Because I think it's different between them is um, land snails have one foot and then crayfish have one mm -hmm. This one's. No. I don't really think crayfish have feet. They, well, it's kind of like when they when we are doing the structures paper when it said do crayfish uh, not crayfish do land snails have feet? Mm -hmm. We said no. Um, but do they have walking legs? We said no because it, it only had a foot. Not it had a only had a foot. So the, the function of the foot and the walking legs are the same, right? That's how they're similar, because they both use them for moving, but the structures are different. They have, these, the crayfish have walking legs and the land snails have the foot, right? Question about the antenna. JJ, can I use your finger? Let's pretend that's the snails, ten, or it's the snails. Um, when you we went to touch it, what happened? It retracts. It goes in, right? What happens when we did that with the crayfish? It, they might have just moved it, right? So they both have these sort of antennae type structures to help sense. But it's also a difference because the tentacles retract, the antennae don't, right? So maybe that's something else you can add. Uh, I also think what's weird is, um, if, you know, this is, um, this is science, if you touch it a lot, it comes, the eye comes out and it comes back up a little, and when it sees you again, it comes back down. Do snails have bristles? So bristles would go here, right? Do crayfish have tentacles? No, they don't have tentacles. They have antennae. Tentacles here, antennae here, right? So one of the things, if you had your notebook open, it might help you see the differences, okay? All right, just to tell you, this is a three-minute warning. Three minutes. As many as you can think of. And just, well, think a little bit more maybe about what you know about other organisms. So those of you that have been working on this for about 10 minutes are, oh wait, are getting close to being done. I know that some of you are going to need a little bit more time. I've had the same conversation with several teams. So I thought maybe we could just have a group discussion quickly before I give instructions for the next part. And I'll wait till all eyes are on me. So one of the things that several of you are noticing is that the, the crayfish and the snails have a lot of the same functions. but. Think of the structures and do they look the same? So for example, several teams thought, yep, they both have antenna because they have a structure that helps them sense. But think of how those structures work. How do they function? If you think about the snail, and if this is the tentacle, what happened when you brought your finger close to the tentacle? It goes in or retracts. 
what happens, what happened when you brought your finger close to the antenna of the crayfish? It just, it retracted? But it, yeah, so the, the, it might have moved the antenna, but it didn't retract. So that is the structures are different, right? The crayfish have antenna, the snails have tentacles. The function of those structures are the same, similar.